Hey gang. So I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this guitar here and I I think I've discovered we might be losing a little bit of tone and maybe some volume because of this. Um, that looks a little bit suboptimal to me. So just what is this guitar? It looks an awful lot like a Gibson Hummingbird, but it isn't. It's actually a Japanese copy slash fake from the 1970s, uh, that period we call the lawsuit years when the Japanese were very carefully uh, copying American trademarked instruments. Um, I didn't talk to the customer on this. It was actually subcontracted to me from a local shop. And uh, apparently this is grandfather's guitar. It's got an awful lot of sentimental value. And you know, in another instance, I might try to talk someone else out of this repair because it is a plywood top instrument and the economics are kind of shaky. However, you know, sentimental value plays a big role in these things, and they know what it's going to cost, and, you know, we're, they're ready to do it. So, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, it's assumed that I'm going to have to take the back off on this thing. Um, it's quite dished out in front of the bridge. It's definitely going to need a new bridge plate, and uh, there could be other stuff in, inside that's, that's wrong with it. You almost have to get it from the back to, to work on something like this. If um, this was a 1960s Gibson Hummingbird, I probably wouldn't take the back off. I'd be working through the sound hole and it would cost about three times as much because it's just so time consuming. But we're going to do this as economically as possible and uh, hopefully we'll end up with a nice playable instrument. Okay, took some prying but I got the bridge off here. You can see the culprits. Uh, these little metal inserts that screw the bridge directly onto the bridge plate. It's not a great design because when things start to fail, I mean, if the if they hadn't been there, this bridge would have fallen off by itself very gracefully, and no damage would have been done to the instrument itself. Just be a simple reglue. Um, so you know, when I put this thing back together, I probably won't use those. The bridge itself has been warped into a strange shape that's um, very convoluted. I, it's just quicker to build a new bridge at this point than trying to salvage this one and get a load of this bridge plate. It is a full four millimeters thick. That is a really thick bridge plate. Looks like 160 thousandths of an inch thick. I decided to remove the pick guard because it was going to get in the way of a number of different operations. It came off relatively easily because it was held on with double sided tape. Then I cut through the lacquer at the neck to body joint and used the router to uh, buzz off the binding, leaving most of the purfling intact so I could gain access to the top or the uh, back to side joint. I used uh, my pallet knives and razor blades and that sort of thing to cut the back free. The neck block was uh, pretty tricky to remove. So we got a shot of the interior here. The uh, back and side set is Bubinga. It's laminated. Of course we have the laminated spruce top. Um, this is interesting. That pink stuff there is actually chalk, which means that they took the time to um, chalk fit all of the brace ends where they run into the lining. Uh, so they got really good recesses for those brace ends, good support. And the linings themselves are actually solid spruce rather than kerf lining, which is surprising. This all takes a little bit more skill than you would expect to find in a guitar in this price range. You know, they're working with materials that we would consider, well, basically substandard, but they're using a really high level of skill while they're doing it. So the bridge pad is the sort of oversized design of the period. That seems to be a solid Central American wood. Um, some one of the fake rosewoods. Um, and I should say that the glue that they used is extremely tenacious. It looks like a standard white glue, but uh, getting that back off was really tough. It was stronger than any white glue I've encountered before. So that makes me wonder how easy it's going to be to get off that bridge pad. I might end up having to carve it off. I'll try heat, see if that works. Uh, but I'll probably end up just mechanically removing it. Anyway, interesting guitar. I used a heat gun to judiciously apply warmth just in the areas that I was working and uh, got in from the top side as well, trying to maintain those delicate layers of spruce plywood. It's a tricky operation. Eventually it all came free though. Here I'm preparing a piece of Sitka spruce that's the same size as the bridge plate which I made out of a piece of uh, tropical hardwood. Don't mind my hands, I was doing some renovations at the same time I was uh, working on this and I really messed them up. Anyway, 
I'm holding that against the inside of the top and tracing around the void. And what I aim to do is make a T-shaped plug, basically, that's the same size as the bridge pad out of spruce that I'll inlay into the top from the back side. So I'm removing uh, all the excess material with the router. At the same time, I'm also working on the bridge. The top was so deformed that I actually clamped it flat when I was uh, putting the bridge plate on there, trying to reverse the curves, the belly in behind and the, the dip in front of the bridge. Then it was time to work on that bridge. Went outside with the sanding machines, the disc sander there. And then it was time to do some hand sanding. Used my binding routing setup to uh, cut a new channel for the binding and a one purfling strip. They must have used camphor as a plasticizer in that binding because the whole place now smells like Vicks Vapo Rub. I'm installing one strip of black wood purfling here that's the full depth of the binding channel. I needed just a little bit more width than the, the single piece of binding would give me. So I'll tape that in place just using regular woodworking glue and then I use super glue to install the um, cream colored binding that matches the stuff that's on the guitar. Peeling that off, I tried to work as neatly as possible uh, so I wouldn't mess up the finish. Just had to do a little bit of scraping uh, with a razor blade to get things level. It's time to put the bridge on. Got a couple of little locating pins there through the bridge uh, saddle slot. So I get that down in place and it uh, stays where I want it when I put the clamps on. So this turned out pretty well. Um, I was, you know, happy with the setup. I got a nice uh, reasonable action with it and uh, just reaming for some bridge pins. I like the wide saddle I used uh, to mimic the adjustable one on the old Gibsons. There's still some humps and dips and valleys in the top. You know, it still looks a little funny, but it's in place and actually sounds really nice. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.